What? Did we waken you, Master Zolka? Did our voices disturb your sleep? I possess a great thirst for water. No, no. Please, let me get the water for you. My thirst is deep, like that of greedy relatives for an inheritance they did not deserve. Or cut purse with an evil thirst for money not his. <laughs> Master Zolka, by sheerest coincidence as you entered, my wife and I were discussing financial problems of a husband and wife of but two weeks. Master Zolka, why do you behold me thus with that lone <coughs> evil eye? Would even a cut purse waste time on a penniless old hermit? I trust no one. I I bring this from the well. The water in the kitchen pail, it, it's warm. Should all the gold in the world vanish, there'd be far less troubles and tribulations. All the thieves would shrivel up and die! <sighs> Night, Master Zolka. Two nights ago, I assumed the orangutan somehow escaped his cage. <coughs> How should I know? Well, let's see. You are with the shipmate both attempting to capture the orangutan since one man could scarcely hope to handle him alone. It was very important he be recaptured because it had an open razor in one hand. What kind of trap? But there was a razor, am I right? Your razor? Yes. No. One moment! If you please, monsieur. I was expecting you sooner. As you must know, you're already too late. But there is still time for you to change your mind. Join me. Let us teach this world a lesson and rewrite the future. It is a pity. Truly a shame that you wish to go against me. The eye have now absorbed your power through your shadow in the past. What may have worked ten years ago no longer does. You must realize now that you cannot hope to stop me with your limited power. No matter what you do, the world will betray you. Why fight it all? Why risk your life for those who will only persecute you later? Yes, boss? I do love making shoes. And I remember you promising to show me some new clothes to return the favor sometime, because these rags are not cutting it with the lady elves. I'll tell you what'll hurt your business. You're not making my jiggy suit and me walking. It was very dark that night in London, 1933. Wind whistled in the narrow streets and growled in the chimneys. It even made its way into the warm study of Dr. Gideon Fell, two stories up from the street. There, before a fire, Dr. Fell sat dozing in an armchair.